Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. Let's talk horror. Uh, today, I am joined by the beautiful and very busy Rachel Reeves. Uh, Rachel, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Thank you for taking time out to come and talk to me. Um, for those of you that don't know, by day, Rachel works at a, the Record Exchange in Boise, Idaho. Uh, she manages The Edge, which is the gift part of the store. Um, mm -hmm. Avid record collector. So it kind of works in your favor there. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and then by night, Rachel is the senior contributing writer for Nightmare on Film Street. And she is also a contributor for Rue Morgue. Um, again, busy lady. Thank you for taking time out to talk to me. Uh, what can, you, can you tell us a little bit about um, Nightmare on Film Street and Rue Morgue a little bit? So for the people that don't know, they kind of are up to speed on what you do over there. Yeah, sure. So um, Nightmare on Film Street uh, is a podcast that is um, started and run by John and Kim, and they are awesome. Uh, so if you haven't listened to that podcast, definitely check them out. And they also have a really awesome horror site where you can find horror news, horror editorials, um, horror listicles, all sorts of awesome content um, at nofspodcast.com. And um, I happen to be one of the contributing writers there. So I have a few monthly editorials and then um, some other stuff here and there, but uh, mostly that. And then Rue Morgue is a Canadian iconic horror magazine. And they also have a fabulous website as well. Um, so I've just recently kind of started writing for them. Um, I've got some stuff in the most recent Halloween issue of the magazine out now, and um, I did some Fantasia reviews for them recently as well for their website. So yeah, that's how I do that. <laughs> that's awesome. And uh, guys, you don't have to write down what she's saying down here in the description. I have all of Rachel's links. So you can listen to the podcast, read some of the things that she's written. Please take the time. Uh, like I said, very busy lady. She works very hard. So I want to appreciate what she's done and kind of take the time and go and look at some of the things that she's done. So, um, but we are here today, Rachel, to talk about the first horror movie that you ever watched. Now you're into, you know, what we were talking about, you're into vinyls, you're into soundtracks as well. This movie has a killer score, a killer soundtrack. Your first horror movie was? Christine by John Carpenter, of course. <laughs> 1983, John Carpenter and Stephen King worked together on this one. Um, Christine is to me such an iconic movie because I seen it at a young age as well and every red card to me after that was Christine it didn't have to be a 58 Plymouth Fury in order for it to be Christine every red card to me was Christine so um, do you remember about how old you were when you watched it for the first time um, I believe I was in middle school so I must have been like 11 or 12 um, mm -hmm. so not super young but I didn't I, I'm the oldest, so I didn't have an older sibling to kind of like, you know, usher me into the horror world. And I didn't really have any friends or anything that were into it at that time. So I feel like I came into it just a little bit late. Um, but my dad showed it to me uh, because I loved cars so much. I was super into Greece at the time because mm -hmm. uh, I love the cars so much. And my dad was like, oh, well, if you like this, I need to show you Christine. <laughs> so uh, right. yeah, that, that, that's how I got introduced to it. <laughs> Wait, better to get into horror late than never. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. And it's funny to think that like 11 is like late, but I know like, you know, just I know so many people that, you know, started at like four and five and I feel like I was a little bit later. Than that. Well, one thing about Christine, though, you're talking about oh, 11 to late age, but with Christine, it's not so much the violence in Christine, but the language, you know, um, the only thing better than getting a car is maybe some pussy or how he calls everybody shitter. You know, oh, like totally. the, the, yeah, the language in the movie alone, like as an 11 year old, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and just like, just the vibe of it. Like I had never really seen something like that. Like it's, it, you know, it builds and it's really like, you see Arnie kind of going through this change and, you know, they were like cool high schoolers. So, you know, as, mm -hmm. you know, a middle schooler, I was like, oh, this is, this is what high school's like. Like, awesome. Right. <laughs> um, and you talk yeah, about Arnie Cunningham just, and. You're right. Like with him and um, Dennis, like that friendship alone, you, it doesn't seem is a natural friendship. You know, you got the jockey cool dude and Arnie's just this super nerd, you know, but watching his transformation totally is amazing in this movie. So um, watching it now, I mean, looking back on it now, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you think of Christine? 
I mean, the car, I mean, for sure. And I mean, I've always liked cars. My dad always was, he was that kind of guy that he, he's always restoring old cars and working on old cars. So I, I'd always had that interest. And yes. I just loved that he, you know, he saw this car out in a field. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very familiar <laughs> with Napa. <laughs> you know, so it, you know, he had this, he saw what Christine could be. And I always, like, I even then loved that because I'm that same kind of way. My, my, my very first car, when I finally did buy a car when I was 16, was a 1951 Chevy Business Coupe. Because, like, that, like, I have always liked that. And I always knew, like, I always appreciated the potential and what it could be. Um, and so even, you, you know, even when he sees her, like, out in the field, I was like, oh, yeah, like, this is, I, I get this. I understand where yeah. he's coming from, you know. <laughs> and I love his negotiating tactic with the, the guy. He's like, how much do you want for it? Whatever you say, it's not enough. <laughs> he's yeah. just like, I'll, I'll give you whatever up, you want. Barney. Shut up. What are you doing? <laughs> He's like so, uh, 250 which, and he's like, well, was scene? it 300? <laughs> yeah. So which scene in this movie do you think affected you the most? Um, I think there's two. I think when it's that, you know, the reverse or the stop motion, I'm not, I'm not actually positive how they do it, but when she heals herself after, yes. she gets, after she gets trashed, like I thought that was like so cool. And that's the first time in the movie that you really see what she's capable of. You know, before mm -hmm. that, it's all kind of like implied or like, you know, kind of subtle. But like that, it's like, oh, no, like this bitch has yeah. power. Like she like she's got some skills, you know. And mm -hmm. then, of course, when she's on fire, you know, cruising down the street after what's his face, buddy. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I mean, I think that's probably the best shot of the whole film, that whole that yeah. whole scene right there. So, of course, when she's, yeah, she's all on fire and stuff. I mean, that, that's... The, the, stunt, <laughs> the stunt guy had to have fun doing that one. But what, what I like about everything you're saying right now is what you brought it up a minute ago. It's always implied before then. And you never really know up until the end, like, is Arnie driving? Is it just Christine? Because you can't see anybody. But it's because the windows are tinted, I guess, you know, watching it back now. But you never actually, until the end, see Arnie in the car. But that still doesn't mean Christine wasn't doing it on her own before. But at mm -hmm. the end, when you see Arnie, I think that's the one that really, like, stuck with me. Because he's just, he's gone at this point. He's so deranged. And watching him at that last scene when he's in the car, like, it's just such a dark and scary scene. Oh, totally. Yeah, he's completely just, uh, I mean, the whole film to me is, just, it just speaks about, like, obsession and like what it can do to you and how it can transform you and cause you to lose sight of, you know, your friends and family and loved ones and stuff like that. And by, by the end, like he doesn't care, like he's given into his obsession and I mean, he's willing to kill his friend and his girlfriend. And it's, yeah, it's, it's terrifying to see him it fully in that place for sure. Well, I can't remember exactly how the quote is because it's been a couple of years since I've seen it, but you, you, the time you really realize when he's gone is after the football accident and um, Dennis is trying to, you know, hang out with him again. And he goes up to the car. He's like, oh, you brought the rust bucket. And he's like, better be careful how you talk about my car, man. You know, like, oh, yeah. you're just like, God damn, Arnie, what the hell, man? Yeah. But, no, I get that. And you got like the scene of him like choking his dad. Mm -hmm. Like that is so, that whole scene is crazy. Yeah, they do a really good job, I think, like, you know, I mean, it's played up a bit, like, but at the beginning, like, showing what he was, you know, and, like, the slow kind of transition, you see little, like, outbursts, but then he'll pull it back, and, you know, it's not, like, an immediate thing, it, it, it's a sliding scale of him kind of losing it, um, but it's, yeah, it, it's, it may, it may, it gives those moments where he does react really strongly, like so much more weight and it's terrifying because you see what's happening to him, but you've also seen like what he was and it's like, Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> it, it, it has that typical thing that Stephen King likes to do where even though Arnie is becoming the villain, you still feel for him after watching how the bullies did treat him before and how, like you're talking about when Christine kind of comes back to life, um, how they destroyed her before. And Arnie's just devastated when he sees Christine in the garage and just how dark it show me. 
and then it just starts coming back to life you know like such, oh, yeah. I gotta watch this movie again because just talking yeah. about it like <laughs> I, I just I have to I have I didn't watch it leading up this I couldn't find it but I think I was gonna buy it today and just watch it it's oh, such such a fun movie yeah it's I mean it's great and I mean those moments where he says show me it also like solidifies the fact that like he knows like he knows that Christine's got a little something extra you know like all his friends are you know telling him like man there's something going on like I don't know, like this car is car and he's just like, whatever, whatever. But it, it shows that it's like, no, he knows, but he doesn't care. Yeah. He's okay. And at this it. point, it's almost like he can communicate with Christine. Like he can hear what she is saying, thinking, whatever, but nobody else can, you know, I can fix myself, show me, you know, mm -hmm. and then it does it. So um, in the movie, which death or kill, I hate to say favorite, but which one stuck out to you the most? Um... I think Moochie's because I think that's I love that scene too because to me it's just like such like a satisfying revenge kill almost because you know she's chased him down he's in that like you know I don't know what loading dock area or something and he's standing there and he thinks that like oh she can't get in here you know like the yeah. car, but and she the car just like forces itself in there and just I mean, it's slow and you see it coming and like, you know, it's going to happen. Like, it's not like a quick thing where it's like shock right. value. It's like, oh no, she's like squeezing her way in there <laughs> and like, just, you know, no fucks given. Like she's doing it. Right. And it's like, oh damn. So I don't know. That's my, my, my favorite, but also I, I think it's just one of the most interesting, I guess. Yeah. Cause you, and like you said, we see it, but also he sees it. He knows like I'm fucked. <laughs> I yeah. put myself literally between a rock and a hard place and I'm fucked now. I mean, I guess he could have like, she's coming slow enough. I guess I've, I've thought this before. He could have jumped on the hood of the car, <laughs> but right. you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's less, I guess, less satisfying. I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. The movie ends there. He jumps up and runs away and then, aha, I tricked you. Yeah, yeah, I guess I mean, he could. I guess he could have done that, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I always ask this as well. We talked about your first horror movie, which was Christine. Now I always go scream. You know, what's your favorite scary movie? What What is your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie um, is Rosemary's Baby, um, because well, for a few reasons. First off, I I always say that was like the. I don't know, the switch that went on for me in terms of like soundtracks where I really okay. kind of like realized the power and the artistry and the close relationship what they have with films and really got me like interested and in paying attention more and learning more about soundtracks. And then also I just, I had never seen a film like that um, in terms of the style and the tone and just, the acting and I mean everything about it just really I guess it hit me at the right time and I was in the right place and I've loved it ever since I mean Plansky I've got my issues with him obviously uh but the sure. film itself the film itself is I, I I'll never get tired of it I'll, I'll watch it all the time <laughs> and in that movie the antagonist is an unborn child for most of the movie yeah, you know, and, like, and, it's, and her husband and her neighbors and there's, yeah, you know, there's the whole thing about, you know, witches and Satanism, but it's also just about, you know, gaslighting and, you know, this woman can't trust, you know, her husband and right. it's just the awful issues, you know, that are all, there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack yeah. there, but I think that they handle it really well and, you know, Mia Farrow is amazing in that film so so what did you think of the rosemary's baby remake did you watch that the made for tv one they did i did it was okay i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's how i felt I about it it's one of those ones where i didn't love it i didn't hate it but i don't remember really anything about it either i remember the um the, the acting was great but yeah. it's to me like I, you know there are certain movies that if you're gonna do a remake on them you you have to do just a hard reboot you can't like evil dead 
I adore the Evil Dead reboot because they didn't just go, well, let's just do what we did before and enhance it now. They completely changed it and they made it so intelligent. The reason they went to the cabin, the new characters, you didn't have to try to redo Ash. Ash Williams has been done and it's been done perfectly. So let's not try to mess with that. So that to me is the perfect reboot would be Evil Dead. Totally. I, I, I agree. I think like if I, I mean, there was nothing wrong with the original film. I think it's different if the original film is a little bit like, oh, I don't know, it wasn't that great to begin with. Like, I don't mind seeing a remake where it, it's actually like trying to resolve some of those issues. But with something that's already like pretty solid, like if you're going to do it, do something different. I even like, yes. you know, like the new Suspiria. I, I really enjoyed that because it's so different. And yeah. it's this you know, director's creative vision and it's different. And I love that. I think that's awesome. I mm -hmm. thought the same thing about Black Christmas, you know, say what you will, like it was different. They went their own direction. And I think that's great. I don't need to see Bob Clark's Black Christmas again. It's perfect. Why would I want to see that. that done again? Yeah. Well, I'm, and, yeah. And that, what is it? Black Xmas? That's, you know, that, that's, some, that's a poor version of it. So it's like, if you're going to redo it, redo it. So right. that, that's my, I don't mind remakes, but if they're going to do something, do, do it differently. <laughs> See, and I'm with you. I'm not one of those people that's like, I think remakes are inherently bad. Uh, reboots are inherently bad. There are bad ones out there. I wasn't a fan of the new Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I wasn't a fan of the new Pet Cemetery. I absolutely loved the new Child's Play. I enjoyed oh. that very, very much. And I catch a lot of shit for that, but uh, 2003's Dawn of the Dead, I think is absolutely phenomenal, even though I know George Romero hated it because of running zombies, but I thought it was great. I loved the movie. So I'm with you. I don't think remakes are inherently bad, but just mm -hmm. don't give me a, you know, um, Vince Vaughn psycho where you're just doing a scene by scene remake and modernizing it. Change totally. it up a little bit. Give me something to look forward to. And, and I think that, you know, they get a bad, remakes get a bad rap these days, but it's like, you guys, like so many of horrors, like, favorite films are remakes like the thing remake mm -hmm. the fly remake like just, i don't know yeah like maybe recently but it's, there's a lot of remakes out there that are amazing so it's, well, you know, the 80s was filled with remakes you're right yeah, yeah so the fly the thing the blob like those are mm -hmm. all movies that and those remakes are better than their 50s and 60s counterparts you know the yeah, thing yeah, john carpenter's the thing is one of the yeah, best but, horror movies ever made Oh, totally. So I think that, you know, people forget about some, you know, the older things and it's like, well, those are remakes too. In Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's another one. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. It's just, I guess, just all subjective, I guess. <laughs> sure. Well, um, I always end this with the same question. Every time we do a skull count, uh, zero being the worst, five being the best. We're ranking Christine. What's your ranking? Five, 100%. Five, five skulls, five shiny Plymouth Furies. Like it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Like it, it is. Yeah, it's it's great. I, mean, I have no complaints about it. And it's to the point where I'm going to go watch it again tonight, just because I us talking about it has totally rejuvenated my interest in watching this movie. You know, because it's so funny. I remember being young. Red cars would scare me, and my sister would call them cool cars. We'd drive <laughs> by, and my sister would be like, "Cool car, cool car," because oh. the red car from Christine. She thought it was an awesome car. And so, like, little memories like that has stuck with me my whole life. So when I see red cars to this day, the first things that go through my head are Christine and Cool Car, you know. So tying those things in with your real life is why I love horror movies so much. And that mm -hmm. first one, you know, getting that first feeling of anxiety and fright and knowing I want to feel that again. I want to do that again. That was so much fun. So, And I do yeah. thank you so much for being on. This has been so much fun. Um, there are sort of certain things we can't talk about, but coming up, you have some very exciting things going for you. Once you are able to talk about those, please let me know so I can update everybody. I'm excited to tell everybody about them. Like I said at the beginning, guys, go down here in the description. Check out a lot of the hard work these guys are doing. They're doing it not just for themselves, but for us so we can be entertained. We can keep updated in the horror community. Please keep up the good work. Don't go anywhere. I have a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll talk to you guys soon.